next on the Broadway show. I'm going way down to Hades Town with the musical's new leading man, Jordan Fisher. Plus, we're getting swept away by the music of the Avett Brothers and the new show featuring their folk rock anthems. And Amber Ruffin joins us. She's part of the creative team behind the upcoming Broadway revival of The Wiz. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show. It's The Broadway Show, and we're back with another great one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Jordan Fisher has gone to hell and back, stepping into the role of Orpheus in Town. We had a chance to talk. Well, I want to start with how much you love this show before you were here in this show. It does a lot of things, this show. There's a lot of bells and whistles and levers to be pulled with this one. And, and I think at the end of the day, it, it, it is one of the more human-oriented theatrical experiences, which is really special. To see people come on stage that are just them, you know, as we enter the stage, we, we are bringing in our own life and experience. Mm -hmm. And we're just Jordan or Emily or Betty or Sol or whoever. When I get to go to a, a, to work at night and mm -hmm. be able to sign into a call board for a musical on Broadway, for it to be such a, st a beautiful story of, of loss and of gain <laughs> and what that's supposed to look like, what that could look like for mm -hmm. us as human beings, how to lean in on one another and to build and form community and to, um, you know, to see ourselves in, in actions that we don't necessarily love like that i think that those small reminders ultimately heal and selfishly it's one where i get to stretch and exercise everything that i love uh, about storytelling and about you know art and playing music being able to be a part of the band and help tell the story that's something that i didn't know would be as as rewarding as it is but the stimulus i think is it's super special and it helps connect kind of all of the pieces and really again like take the, the mythology out of these characters that, you know, whose names we've heard over sure. years and years and years. They're now just people. They're just us. They're us. And we get to go on that journey with them. And, and this, I felt drawn in from the rip. That, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, if that's that, that. not the most lit <laughs> thing at the top of a Broadway musical, it's so special. I'm coming away from me. I hear the walls repeating, it's falling up my feet, and it sounds like Johnny. Well, let me ask you this, because you talked about healing. Does it help you in your other role? Because you have another really big role in your life. A couple of them, but a really big role in your life right now. The most special one. It's the, the most important. Talk a little bit about that, being yeah, a dad. I'm a daddy. <laughs> my favorite part of it, how it has affected it, everything else in my life is that everything else in my life emphasis on else mm -hmm. is this much this this big wow it's, it, it all shrunk i mean you've accomplished so much and to have that you know now be the you know where you look and what you go to and really the north star is completely is beautiful what is next it's always a time for reflection right this yeah. time of year is kind of you know you walk through new york city yeah it's a dream a lot of people to be able to walk into a, a theater and their name yeah, on the marquee man. yeah man uh, their it's face on the, on the poster what is it is this time of reflection for you yeah right now loving just loving the end of the year in the city and for the first time in my life i'm i'm, I'm genuinely like I'm so content where we are, what's going on. Home. Home. I get to, we get to do this, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I'm here. Present. I'm at the Walter Kerr Theater. You're present. I'm Orpheus in Hades Town <laughs> right now. Yes, you and are. And I couldn't be happier about that. Yeah. We're celebrating another huge opening night on Broadway. How to Dance in Ohio is now on Broadway. It's based on the award-winning HBO documentary, and it features seven neurodiverse actors making their Broadway debuts. We hit the red carpet with the stars opening night. Most of my life I've been a teacher and some of my most favorite moments are teaching people with special needs. And I've taught dance to so many wonderful kids that are on the spectrum. And my manager happens to have two kids that are on the spectrum. And I said, help me get involved. And seeing the ability of, of young people learning how to align their art align themselves with their heartstrings, that's what this show is all about. It goes way beyond autism and being on the spectrum. It's about inclusivity and it's about celebration and it's about fun and, and joy. A lot of people 
treat the word autism as like a, a like a swear word even like it's there's so much stigma behind it a lot of us didn't really talk about we are autistic for the same reason and i think it's so beautiful that the show showcase so many different kind of like autism on a different spectrum and then people can be like oh this is something to be celebrated this is a joyful show and then if people are more uh willing to talk about it and you learn more about it then you will understand that there's nothing to be uh scared of i hope audiences can learn that autism doesn't have one look we don't even i like this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to accessibility rights communication rights um when it comes to disability it is like just playing with your best friends on stage like i i i will never get over how lucky i am to be making my broadway debut with some of my favorite people on this earth will you send my life world in darling when you're twirling on the floor prepare to be swept away a new musical featuring the songs of the avid brothers is testing the waters in dc We've hit the red carpet with the stars on opening night. Well, actually, I looked to the Avid Brothers for inspiration. Um, they are a super grassroots band. They, they came out of Concord, North Carolina. They were playing pubs and bars and traveling the, the, the United States. And I, I also have an indie band that really looks up to them. You guys, like, you, you are the real deal. You've really worked it. And, and it's not about connections or who you know. It's like you, you have made it happen. And so I've just tried to embody that spirit coming into this. Always remember there was nothing worth sharing like the love that let us share our name. What has been incredible and almost overwhelming has been the, the, the amazing response of fans of the Ava brothers and of all the people in the team. Uh, people, people come from all across the United States and all over the world to see this show. Once I was a carpenter and man, my hands were calloused. I could swing a middle mallet sure and straight. All I know is that it's just a real honor to sing their songs. They're incredibly, amazingly gifted, emotional, vulnerable songwriters. Their melodies and their harmonies are exquisite. I'm in love with this show. I really am. I, 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 there's something about it that had grabbed me in a way that no other uh, piece I've ever been a part of has. And I just, um, I, I don't take it for granted. I feel so unbelievably lucky that we get to keep sharing it with audiences. I feel really lucky to be working on this. It's, it's new. And even though it is technically a jukebox musical because the songs existed before this show, it doesn't feel like that. I feel like we have a real special group and everyone is at the top of their game. And not just the people that I have worked with before, but everybody in every department has such deep passion for this project. It is a special thing that doesn't always happen. Nearly 50 years since the opening on Broadway, the revival of The Wiz is now on the yellow brick road back to the great bright way. And Amber Ruffin joins us. She's part of the creative team behind the upcoming Broadway revival of The Wiz. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. How's it going, Amber? Hi. Oh my God, you are, I think this is like kind of a dream project for you. Am I right? You've been dreaming this. Yes, absolutely. I feel like everybody adores The Wiz and to some extent, The Wiz has done real work for you. Like, you know, being a little kid, I it just didn't occur to me that I could be, you know, like at a pearl and have my own character and my own jokes because I was a girl who um, was black. I had never really seen that before. Uh -huh. I feel like every person has something like that. The Wiz reached out and spoke mm. to you specifically, and everybody has um, a case of that, where it just expanded how you thought about what entertainment could be. A lot of the audience was children, and the children were entertained, and the parents were entertained. Everybody loved you know, every moment of it, and that you don't get a lot. The show doesn't talk down to the kids. That's right. And it doesn't make the parents feel like they're stuck at a kid's shop. That's right. But and they don't happy. like segregate the jokes yeah. from old people jokes and baby jokes, that it's everybody laughing at the same joke, which I, that's the dream. Okay, so that immediately feels like that's a, that's a big challenge. Okay, I feel two ways about it. Uh -huh. Because 
People love the Wiz so much that they're really gonna defend it and it better be just like they want it to be. But also, people love the Wiz so much that they're, you know, <laughs> there to have a great time. Like, it's both. Uh -huh. Yeah, I feel like my task is to bring the Wiz into 2024. Not like Dorothy's holding an iPad or we're, <laughs> you know, no. using today's <laughs> slang. But it's so that when you do it in a high school, you know, kids aren't like, hey, I can't be doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It has to be of today mm -hmm. um, as far as our sensibilities go. Right. So that is the first task. Yeah. Because, buddy, there's it, it can be dicey. But one of the things I thought was really cool about The Wiz is how 70s it was. Yeah. And it was it had a ton of slang from the right. 70s and it just made it cool. Uh -huh. it, it, like either The Wiz takes place in 1970 something or it just has no time, right? right? So I wanted to write one that kids can do 20 years from now mm -hmm. that you couldn't read yep. it and go, this is from this exact period. Mm -hmm. So I hope that 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 I did that. <laughs> yeah, I know Shelly Williams mentioned to me that she wanted uh, the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man to be of the same age as Dorothy, which I think is a really interesting, make them more like a peer group yeah. instead of uncles. What other kinds of things are you exploring with, within this? It's hard to write a show where everyone knows everything that's about to happen. <laughs> It's really hard to build tension. <laughs> we all know <laughs> Eveline's gonna get you. We know she's gonna get you. And we know she's probably gonna melt at some point. We all know it. Because of that, we get to explore other things, right? Uh -huh. Because it's inevitable that the tornado's gonna come. It's inevitable that she'll get home. It really leaves a lot of space for us to go, how does Dorothy talk to the scarecrow? Like, what do they have in common? Mm -hmm. Which was another great thing that Shelley did was when she put them all in the same age group, it really changed everything. Mm -hmm. For her to be a part of this group is cool. For her to be a young black girl leading these people, like, that's fantastic. And we wanted to maybe get a little bit of that for her to be like the natural leader that she is. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of our version, she becomes the president. I'm just kidding. <laughs>Wine and Roses comes to Broadway this winter. It's the new musical based on the 1958 teleplay and the 1962 film about a marriage destroyed by alcoholism. The musical starring two of Broadway's greatest, Kelly O'Hara and Brian Darcy James. Moulin Rouge is next level. You've almost got to experience it to believe it. The iconic music, the incredible set, and the Tony award-winning costumes. Let's send it out to Perry Sook. Dressers get Broadway talent ready to go back on stage, both inside and out. I'm here at the Al Hirschfeld Theater talking to Aaron Simone, who readies the sparkling diamond for the Tony Award winning show. Well, how cool is this? We are in Satine's dressing room with the woman behind the woman, Aaron Simone. So Aaron, what, what does it even mean to, to be back here and to be a dresser for someone. What does that mean? It means being protective. It means staying on top of the job. It means a lot of pressure, but not really just keeping her safe, just making sure she's hitting her cues, making sure her mindset is pretty good back here, keeping the vibes right in the dressing room. Just making sure we have a good time, making sure we're keeping the laugh going in between scenes because she's literally never leaves stage. So I just try to make sure the piece is still there when she's off. Yeah, well, and there's so many costumes here. How many, how many changes does she have throughout the show? I want to say 12 wow. or more. How many of those are quick changes, and how many of those do you, do you actually have your time to, you know, button all the buttons? One, two, three, four, maybe five. Do you know what the fastest one you have in the show is? The fastest one is Shut Up and Raise. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's like, uh, to, uh, let, to, uh, and it's like probably 30 seconds in, and she's out. <laughs> that's that's unbelievable. Besides changing the costumes and doing all that, is there any pep talk? And you talk about the protection. What what goes into some of these changes? Um, it's not really a pep talk. We actually don't even really talk about the change. We're talking about stuff we've done 
did during the day. We're <laughs> talking, we're laughing about something that's going on. We're laughing about her not getting her shoe on right and having to hurry up and, you know, slip it on. It's like, it's, it's really chill. It's really, really chill. We make sure we keep it comfy and cozy during in the midst of that in the midst of the craziness for sure you know i see the camaraderie here <laughs> what, what what does that mean you know you, you you don't see a lot of people you know rocking swag and the right. people they're helping out <laughs> what, what what makes you team satine honestly courtney came up with the name when we knew that she was coming in and so we was just kind of like oh we team satine oh we team satine but um, it's our community. It's because we have to be together all the time. We have to be together so much. We have to be very vulnerable with each other and we have to just be there for each other. So we were just like, we teams a team. We here all day. And and I, I think also because we're so far away from everybody, we're mm -hmm. really all we have here. So sometimes Casey will even come down and we'll just, you know, even after the show, just enjoy a moment together. Cause it's, so it's really like all for one, all, one for all. Like we're teams a team. Thanks for staying with us for this latest episode of The Broadway Show. I'm so glad you're here. There's nothing quite like Christmas time in the city, and there's always a lot of great entertainment in New York, especially around the holidays. Let's check back in with Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. The great Sandra Bernard will close out 2023 with her signature holiday shows at Joe's Pub from December 26th to the 31st. I met up with her at the iconic Public Theater Hotspot. This is the Public Theater. This is the Public Theater. And 25 years ago, they opened this amazing Joe's Pub named after the great Joe yes, Pub. That's right. And it hasn't stopped since. I mean, I can't believe the variety of shows and artists that come in here. Including you, every holiday well, including season. Including me, yeah, especially me. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Sandy at Joe's Pub, this is like like Judy at the Palace. I mean, this is this is like a legendary venue for you. It really is. It's quintessential New York. It is. Uh, musically, I, I always think it's excellent because I kind of cultivate songs throughout the year that I think, oh, well, I'd, I'd really like to bring my take to that song, my interpretation. I think that the people who come, whether they're out of towners or native New Yorkers or people who are transplants, like most of us are. I think this is the place people come, they want to connect to that energy and the beauty of the underlying themes and currents of, of humanity. And you are, for me, one of the ultimate New York cool icons. It's such a beautiful legacy you have with this city and with the people of this city, and it's special. Well, it is special, and, and it also has resonance uh, and reverberations because when I go other places, other other parts of the country, yeah. where people are not, don't have such readily accessible, you know, artistic, cultural things happening, you can bring a little bit of that and also bring just the, you know, the realness and the funkiness and the emotion of life and 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 what I connect with. I'm you know I'm not a snob. I I like I I really like people when they're accessible and groovy, and it really doesn't matter what their background is. You're doing 10 shows this year, right. between Christmas and New Year's, and then a New Year's show. It's become a tradition. I mean, it's like, for me, it's like, you know, you see the tree, you see the Rockettes, you see Sandy <laughs> down at Joe's Pub. I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's great. Your brand, for me, is that you're always in the moment, and you're always paying attention to the world. You've kind of put the world in focus, and you make everyone feel better. It's, it's, a, real, it's a real gift you have. And it's a gift that I like to cultivate, and I don't turn my back on it. I think that's one of the reasons I've continued to perform live throughout my career. And I, it always draws me back in. And I'm always jotting down ideas and, and thoughts and, and, and conversations I hear or moments in the taxi or, you know, all these things that, that are just like constantly, you know, just bursting around us. And they're flavorful and they're inspiring and they're colorful. And that's what keeps life so and the continuity, the ongoing yeah. sort of thread of life. The search for the Holy Grail is going strong on Broadway, and in honor of the revival of Spamalot, we've got a new blog over at Broadway.com. It's called The Weekly Grail, hosted by Leslie Rodriguez Kritzer. She plays the Lady of the Lake. To Sue Pelkover, Sue runs the spot in the in the booth, 
And Sue and I have a bit every <laughs> night when I come out in the second act and I do whatever happened to my part, I go, Sue! And she takes the spotlight and puts it off center. And it's a, and it's a joke, so it's all timed. Hi, James. <laughs> I tried to get a bit with the spotlight people, but they you said too? no. Oh, they said, why? They said, because it was just yours. They said, it was just, there's only one queen. There's only one queen in this Stop show. Stop it. And yes. it's right here, and she deserves it. There's only she one queen. It? But yeah, Sue's awesome. Yeah. The latest episode is now live over at Broadway.com. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.